afternoon, good night. Um, we are here again with the pre-event of the 18 International Docomomo Conference, uh, which will be held in Santiago in Chile in December to, 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 to 2024. And this pre-event is uh, entitled Modern Architecture, Design, Construction, Restoration. We have here the presence of uh, Claudio Vázquez. Claudio is professor at the Catholic University and chair of the Master in, in um, Sustainability and Energy in Architecture. Um, he is a um, um, very good friend of Docomomo also. And um, he, he is going to talk about Le Corbusier's design for Maison Rasuris in Zapallar, Chile. Um, as many of you of you know, uh, this is um, a design that Le Corbusier did uh, around 1929 and 30 uh, on um, for the for the uh, former ambassador of uh, Chile in Argentina uh, and. Uh, um, okay, I'm um, introduced, and then uh, we have the 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 presentation of uh, of Flavia Rinaldi uh, of the ateliers uh, for artists in Buenos Aires, uh, designed by uh, Antonio Bonet, Horacio Verabarros, and Abel Lopez Chas, uh, designed as a house for um for artists um okay claudio if you are ready thank you for being here and thank you for for the public we are attending today thank you very much do you hear me well or yes yes fine yes okay thank you very much Horacio, for your presentation thank you everybody who is here and what I'm going to present you, it's a work that has 15 years old. So uh, it's a long time that I didn't look at it. And uh, I has to to remove my old files. Sorry, I want to take the time. And find many things that I didn't expect, but I could not find many things that I expect. So my presentation is a little bit, uh, I mean, Confused, maybe, but I hope to transmit you well uh, my uh, main idea. So, uh, the content of the presentation has these uh, five points. First, we're going to talk about the actors related with the, uh, with the, uh, I mean, with this uh, house, uh, the commission, the circumstances of the commission made by uh, Matthias Arasuris to Le Corbusier. I would explain you the context, I mean, or what can we see as a content in the project. Uh, after that, the project issues, uh, maybe that's the reason why this project wasn't built from my point of view. And finally, uh, some little uh, conclusions uh, related with the importance of the relevance of this project that I mean uh, can be or has to be uh, considered. Well, the actors uh, are three. The first one is Matias Errasuri. Matias Errasuri was uh, uh, a Chilean diplomatic uh, who lives in Buenos Aires. Uh, the other aspect, or the other actor, is not a person, but it's a, it's a main, uh, I mean, aspect of the of the commission of this project is Savayar is the place. It is a special place, um, an exclusive place in the central coast of Chile. And the other one is Le Corbusier, of course, the architect who uh, has visited uh, Buenos Aires in 1929. And it was the moment when this, I mean, a little bit uh, not confused, but complex uh, commission uh, he, that he receives because 
we have a client in Buenos Aires. The architect has to work in Paris, in France, and the project must be built in Savayar, in Chile. So three aspects, three different, I mean, topics that must be considered to understand what it's uh, the characteristic, which are the main characteristics of the of this uh, project. The first one is Matias Arasturis. Uh, he was married with Josefina Alvear. Uh, they have two kids, uh, Matias and Josefina. Uh, it's important to consider this uh, uh, family configuration because Matias Arasturis was a member of, uh, I mean, an important family, a political and economical family in Chile. The same has, it was Josefina Alvear. Uh, when uh, Matias Rastoris was living, there was uh, three presidents of uh, our country. And uh, Josefina Alvear, uh, it was, uh, I mean, a family uh, with another president uh, of uh, Argentina, Marcelo Torcuato Alvear, I mean, I don't remember well. Uh, in 1929, uh, Matias Rastoris was 63 years old. Uh, Josefina Alvear was 70 years old, and the sons were 29 and 30 respectively. But this consideration is important because uh, the project itself has uh, considered the, uh, a room for uh, Josefina Alvear, uh, and she, with his 70 years old, has limited mobility. So uh, this was considered in the, in the program of the project. She has a bedroom in the first floor, uh, but uh, Matias Rasuri has a different one uh, in a, in a second floor in a uh, in a balcony uh, in the main room of the of the project. In 1931, she was ambassador uh, in Buenos Aires in Argentina, and that is important because uh, I mean, or the main. For me, what is important to define uh, his profile is that he made that work for free. He didn't receive any payment uh, with, uh, working in that position. So it was a family who has, I mean, a really uh, high position in the society at the point that they couldn't work for free. The family has, a, I mean, artist uh, um, uh, collection. And that is the main, uh, the base of the um, collection of the uh, Museum of Art, of Decorative Arts in Buenos Aires today. Those are just some examples. Uh, uh, and, and a portrait from Sorolla uh, is the first one. Uh, is, a, is a portrait to Josefina Alvear. And there is a project too uh, that Agut Rodan made for uh, the house uh, of uh, a Rastoris family in Buenos Aires in 1913. Another important aspect is that it wasn't the first experience for uh, a Rastoris family to build, a, a, I mean, a, a project uh, with an architect uh, in who was uh, in, in France. René Sergent it was the architect of the Erasuris Palace made in Buenos Aires. And um, this palace, I mean, it was uh, uh, built in 1911. Uh, so uh, they has a previous experience uh, building a project when uh, the architect was not uh, in the country. Uh, and the experience uh, that you, uh, I mean, the, it was really different that that couldn't be happened or that is it, different than the one in, in the Erasuris house, because as you see here, there is a detail of the brasserie. Uh, this is a finishing woodwork uh, of walls uh, that uh, René Sergent sent as a detailed, I mean, uh, project from France. Think uh, that's never happened uh, in the Erasuris project where uh, Matthias Erasuris just received some uh, plans uh, in a scale one to 50. Uh, this is, I mean, the main characteristic. I, I, I mean, we cannot go deeper because of the time. But uh, the second, the second one is uh, uh, Le Corbusier. Le Corbusier is, was a well-known architect, especially in France. Not necessarily uh, too much known 
uh, in the rest of the world, not necessarily in 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 Buenos Aires. He was, uh, I mean, visited. He he visited uh, Buenos Aires in 1929, and gave uh, a series of conferences. Uh, but his main, I mean, uh, presentation it was this collection of books. Uh, he was an architect who works uh, building projects, but especially uh, writing books. Where uh, his theory about architecture it was, I mean, uh, right. And uh, he was a painter too. So he was not a common practitioner uh, of architecture. He was an intellectual. Uh, and that it was possible because he has a, bad, has a partner, his cousin, Pierre Yenaret. There were partners in the atelier at the Rue de Sebres in Paris, where you can see uh, their works uh, at the time, uh, so many peoples. But mostly it was Pierre Yenaret who taking care of the architectural project. He was, uh, uh, Le Corbusier didn't have uh, the title of architect. He couldn't sign, I mean. Uh, but Pedro uh, Ariel yes, it was uh, an architect, a formal architect. The other aspect is uh, Savayar. Savayar, it's, uh, I mean, uh, how do we say? It's a, a resort in the middle uh, of uh, Chile, in the central of Chile, uh, that uh, it was, uh, I mean, born as a, I mean, productive land in 1850. Uh, that's, uh, I mean, land, it was uh, owned by Francisco Javier Ovalle Errazuri, who took, uh, I mean, the challenge of become or transform this land in a productive one. Uh, he has many, I mean, projects related with that. And Zapayar, it was transforming in a port, in a, in a little port, in 1847, and that was when uh, it appeared as a place uh, in the map. I mean, mostly as a, uh, the thing that this was first uh, a minor port is important because of uh, the closely relation that it could be had with Valparaíso, the main port of Chile at that moment, and until this moment, some of the, mo the most important. So this communication. Uh, has the opportunity to have uh, some special kind of architecture. The earliest uh, houses uh, were prefabricated, coming in the uh, directly from uh, from Valparaíso, imported by this way. And in 1906, a earthquake show how these, uh, I mean, uh, first uh, houses were prefabricated, probably come from Europe. Uh, and build it there. So the main thing is that it was a, a lost place, uh, really uh, well communicated with all the world. Sabaya uh, uh, became uh, as a, a municipality, uh, and the first, uh, I mean, uh, main of the municipality was Solegario uh, Ovalle Vicuña who has transformed the landscape of the place. Uh, there you can see a photograph of 19, uh, cent of, uh, 1900 and 1930, the difference of the forest. Uh, that was, uh, I mean, an important project to Olegario Valle uh, to have the place as we know today. Uh, it was, this is a map of uh, Zapayar. Uh, there you can see uh, the, I mean, the topographic plan of the Erasuris plot. Uh, before the first project that it was made on the plot, it was the, I mean, the, the gardens. Uh, following, I mean, the logic of the place where uh, the forest was really important. And uh, at the left, you can see the ambience. It was a, um, a resort uh, with the, where the high society of our country has an opportunity to meet each other every, I mean, summer. 
The second point is the commission. Uh, well, as a synthesis, those three aspects are a faraway place, not technological uh, low, uh, I mean, uh, related is uh, Sabayar, an architect, a uh, well-known architect who has a big theory uh, about architecture, uh, and a family who could pay uh, a project and build it uh, so far away as uh, we, uh, the, with an architect uh, living far away. This is the, I mean, uh, the commission, I mean, the aspect of the commission, the first aspect of the commission is that Le Corbusier visited, uh, I mean, Buenos Aires in 1929. He made a series of, I mean, uh, conference. Everybody knows that. Uh, the, this conference fin finished in a book uh, called Precision. Those are some images. And uh, the commission itself was made uh, uh, in October 15 of 1929, uh, when uh, he made, the same day he made the conference at the faculty of science of uh, of extract science, uh, the and the conference it was called and Maison and Palais. This is the contract that it was signed in the, that moment. Uh, the I mean the commission it was made uh, by fifteen thousand francs. That was uh, the I mean the the payment for the architect. And at the right side, you can see some drawings that were made in this uh, uh, first meeting that are dated at the same day of the contract it was signed and the, I mean, the, the conference and the son Ampale was made at the Faculty of Science. I mean, something important to understand uh, the ambience or what kind of, uh, I mean, commission was made. Uh, it, there, up you can see uh, a little, I mean, uh, detail of the contract, where there says that uh, the the commission it was not a house, it was on habitation. Uh, it's it's a house that is more a plant tip of a petit cellule de repos. The petit cellule de repos uh, is some important concept. Uh, I mean. Uh, if we have time, if, if we could have time to explain every uh, every uh, aspect of the contract, you can understand. Uh, I mean, the kind of uh, of uh, conversation that you can have. Uh, some of the uh, I mean drawings of this first uh, meeting is titled uh, "Ancelul Franciscan." So the I mean, the idea it not was to make a house. It was to make a petite cellule that is a cellule franciscan. Uh, that's what take us to the experience that the Corbusier has in 1911 at the Cartuja de Emma, where he was really impressed. And this, uh, I mean, experience with the cellule where the, the monks uh, uh, has to live uh, it was really, I mean, an important, uh, I mean, experience for him. He made these drawings. And after that, he explained that this was the origin of the Immuebles Villas uh, that was projected uh, based on this typology of, uh, I mean, uh, way of living uh, in 1922. So the commission, it was not a house. It was a modern concept of how to live related with this, this uh, I mean, idea of the cellule. The, I mean, what Matthias Rassel received uh, as a, a, I mean, response made by the architect, it was this letter. And there are six, but there are, but are in total are seven plans with uh, uh, the project uh, defined uh, by uh, the plant, the sections, um, some, I mean, croquis, some 3D drawings, uh, the plot plan, and not much more. The scale is 1 to 15. This is the most biggest, uh, I mean, scale uh, of the drawings. So what he was really received, it wasn't uh, a project to build. It was a general approach uh, to what to do uh, with the plot and a general idea that it must be built 
uh, by any other person there in the place. There are two notes. Uh, in uh, January of 1930, uh, Le Corbusier sent a telegraph uh, to, to the client explaining that they has too much work to do, so he couldn't send the plant until that moment, but he is expected to do the, his best. So uh, he's saying that he cannot send the plant until uh, in this moment, but it will be sent it as soon as possible. Finally, uh, this is a note uh, that was, uh, um, I mean, part of the of the letter that of of, of the plan that uh, Matthias Rastori receives, uh, and it uh, has uh, the date of 10th of April of 1930. So uh, the project took at least six months to be developed by the office after uh, Matias Erasur received it there in uh, Buenos Aires. Um, the project itself, uh, when, what I did as a job, it was to try to understand how does the project was developed. Those are uh, five uh, main steps of the, of the development of the project. And uh, the table show the plans. There are some plans uh, made by Pierre Genere, uh, who is the, uh, was the cousin of uh, Le Corbusier, and other plans made by uh, the Le Corbusier, his own. And, and there are five steps, um, mainly with the final, uh, I mean, version uh, of the idea of this project. I will talk just about someone to explain how does this, uh, I mean, design was developed, what is the logic of an architect working in this kind of project, uh, and the, I mean, the kind of the way of project, uh, the, the way that Le Corbusier think or create uh, their project as a creative process. This is the group, uh, Ordenación, de la sala de estar, that means uh, the ordination or mean the, the configuration of the main room. This group is uh, inside of these three plans that were made uh, in some of it by, by Pierre Janaret and the other ones by Le Corbusier. There at the left, uh, you can see uh, one of those plans, the the, the the plan the I mean has a, a, a code that is 1903, and what you can see uh, is the uh, every plan was signed. That's how you can see who is the uh, the the author of the plan. Here is P J. That's P J. Uh, authority, and at the right uh, you can see some kind of a study uh, about what. It was, I mean, uh, developed uh, in this section and this, uh, I mean, uh, uh, front elevation. And mainly it was the first moment where the uh, two, uh, the inverted roof uh, slope, uh, I mean, there's a, a, the roof is, uh, I mean, has two inverted slope. And the main thing that it was worth here, it, it, that the slope, it must be parallel to the ramp that organized all the, uh, I mean, main room. Uh, at the right, you can see the measures that were analyzed to give uh, the, I mean, the, the the slope of the ramp, and that uh, and the 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 roof uh, is a result of uh, this, uh, I mean, minimum uh, slope that uh, the ramp needs. Uh, and here is how uh, does uh, it works uh, in relation with the design. Uh, this idea, it wasn't work or it wasn't, I mean, discussed at the first time in the Maison Rastoris. There at the left, you can see uh, some drawings, uh, some first step of the Maison de Mandrot, uh, that uh, Maison de Mandrot and Maison Rastoris uh, were designed at the same time uh, at, the, at the atelier. And uh, 
the parallel of the idea of to have a two slope inverted uh, roof. It was first analyzed at Maison de Mandro uh, with drawings that were made directly by Pierre Jeanneret and uh, it was transferred to uh, Maison Erasuris. Uh, I mean, um, the drawings can speak, I mean, alone. Well, this idea, uh, because the inverted roof finally is an idea that here is related with the, I mean, the, 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 the ramp uh, slope. And there is no way or no consideration uh, related with rainwater, uh, with the gutter, there's no gutter of rainwater. Uh, but, uh, and that was the, I mean, the solution that it was sent to 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 Matthias Erasuris, and the question is, if uh, anybody has to build the house, uh, how can we solve this? I mean, gutter, considering that the plans didn't show anything, and uh, we can see some ideas that were, I mean, deeper in that uh, detail. Uh, one of them is the Via de Les Extants, where the gutter uh, is related with the axis of the structure of wood and uh, has some size that we can think that it's enough to solve the rainwater uh, that uh, it was known, I mean, developed for the uh, uh, Erasuris house. But there was another uh, idea that it was developed in this Maison Rimeau from 1936, that was a literally corresponding, uh, I mean, drawings from Erasuris Maison. The first one, you can see the gutter uh, as a little, I mean, uh, uh, solution um, related with Maison Les Sectants. At the right, we can see how does it has a transformation, uh, I mean, putting together, working together the, uh, the gutter with the structure. And finally, at the right, uh, the really, I mean, uh, relation with uh, Erasuris Maison, where the gutter is, I mean, an element of circulation, uh, mainly related or clearly related with a chimney that is downstairs and, uh, I mean, the ramp with the parallel, uh, I mean, um, the parallel uh, slope with the with the roof. That was an idea that was uh, literally uh, worked or applied in a project more. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, in, in a more complex project that's Mason Clark Arundel of 1938, where the these two slope uh, inverted roof. Uh, considered the, I mean, the gutter as a circulation element that's uh, marking the axis of the house. And, uh, and I mean, working uh, as a architectural element, not as a, just a technical one related with the rainwater, but an element uh, that uh, can give us, I mean, organization structure of the uh, plan. It was an idea that it was uh, go deeper. After that, in 1940, with this maison for la Société du Product Azotez, this was a, an, uh, I mean, it was a house made for an enterprise. Uh, they had to, uh, I mean, develop a house for the, I mean, for the workers of these fabrics. And uh, here now, uh, we have more, I mean, relation or more aspects that were related with this, uh, related with the Maison Rasuri. This is a house made with a, a wall of stones, as Rasuri's house was. And um, the gutter of the rainwater is an element that, I mean, uh, mark or uh, divide the house into zones, and all the services are related with this. Uh, I mean, uh, lowest hay uh, space that make the transformation or divide the space in two parts. 
this is now an element that is structured that that or main or that play a main uh, role in the architecture of the uh, project, and that was, uh, I mean, a more uh, expressive uh, way to understand how does this kind of roof can work. These unites uh, from 1944 were thinking to as a, I mean, a strategy to rebuild uh, the um, uh, the war after to, to, to work for rebuild the country after the war, and there was another, I mean, complexity related with this kind of routes where the circulation. Uh, there are two units of housing, the circulation, and in the second step, there are the services of the uh, houses. So you have the way to circulate uh, inside those volume, those constructed bo the construction of volumes, and um, uh, one house and the other one. The scheme of this house. Uh, is at the right side. There you can see the circulation space with the person uh, there who's working there, working there, sorry. Uh, and in the second level, there are the services uh, with people uh, who is managing uh, some things, uh, but they're uh, the bathroom at Cousin and, and uh, they're working uh, as a, I mean, zone of the, Functional structure of the project, uh, what that it was, I mean, um, related with the services as in the last uh, project. I know I will go uh, really far away with this, but uh, this is a, a, I mean, um, a, I mean, a section of uh, the unities uh, in Marseille from 1952, where the circulation. Uh, is really related with the last project and what is happening inside uh, of, of, I mean, uh, up and down of uh, this uh, uh, of this uh, circulation is related with the services too. So, what it was at the beginning of the Rasuri's house uh, or in the in the basic project, it was impossible to know how could we how could it be uh, developed by the architect? They didn't send enough uh, information. We have plans that they have no possibility to be developed. And if we uh, consider the possibility of the uh, to understand this project, um, any idea uh, have this kind of, uh, I mean, deep uh, possibilities to be considered uh, because of uh, the way how the architects of the atelier think it was every project, it was not, I mean, uh, a solution. It was a step of different, of different ideas that were uh, developed uh, in different projects at the same time. This kind of thing we can see everywhere in the Erasmus Maison development. Uh, the first one is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, some of the first uh, drawings or schemes of the project uh, where the project of Mameson of 1929 is uh, directly, I mean, um, related with that. There is another step where uh, the project it was, uh, I mean, for the first time, um, we call in Spanish Pasado Olimpio. I mean, it's the first, I mean, um, architectural plans. It's, uh, I mean, formally drawings uh, were made. And uh, in this, uh, I mean, step, what it was decided, it was the structure of the walls. It was made by stone. Uh, and uh, what we can discuss here is uh, the relation between this, uh, I mean, decision and Maison Citroën, uh, who was uh, uh, a structure of uh, made by stones to a wall structure in the first, in their first, uh, I mean, um, 
and in the first versions from 1922. And uh, another example is when at the first time the project uh, understood how does the terrain it was, the land that has a big, I mean, difference of a uh, hay. Um, so, uh, and there, uh, the solution was, uh, I mean, literally the idea of the cellul that it was compromised with uh, uh, Matthias Erasuris in the contract. And there you can see the main, uh, the main room, uh, there was a big salon and uh, the little cellul that was the place where uh, the uh, uh, Josefina Alvear has his bedroom and there are the services of the of the of the house and uh, in the first moment where the terrain appear as a complex uh, uh, I mean land because there are big differences of hay between the lowest and the upper part of the terrain. Uh, this uh, typology of a space appear. And uh, we can go deeper to understand how does it work? Why is this in, in that way? Even the measure of these spaces and uh, the proportion uh, and the way of use it. Uh, it is, I mean, some idea that we can begin with this immeubles villa, immeubles villa, and understand it well. So the project is full of this kind of citation between what they were, what they do before, what is the moment in their work when uh, Erasmus House is, I mean, working, is being working and how these uh, many different uh, ideas were developed uh, uh, after or in the future or in another uh, opportunity or another project in the future. So this kind of idea is an etc. Uh, the plants of the houses, it's full of these citations, it's full of these ideas transformed or trans uh, I mean, put one inside uh, or about the other, and everywhere uh, we can find this, I mean, kind of network of ideas uh, working uh, in that project. So, uh, but the project had some issues. Uh, this is uh, 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 an image where Matthias Serrasuris, this is the one with the jockey. Uh, this, uh, I mean, those, uh, the, finally the project was, um, I mean, built by a Mexican architect called Carlos de Landa. Carlos de Landa built these houses that appear here in the image, uh, there in, in Zapallar. Uh, Matias de Landa know, I mean, culturally well the, uh, the place. So he has the experience of building houses. So he has received, uh, we don't have proof of that, but he has received the plans made by the Corbusier and he has to do his professional work. This is at the left, the house itself, how it was built by Carlos de Landa. It's not the project made by the Corbusier. It's a really different one. It's a two-step volume. But the main ideas, uh, of this uh, volume are related with the drawings of the, I mean, first meeting between Matias Erasuris and Le Corbusier. There you can see there is a main salon. And uh, the main salon is this plan that is related with what uh, Le Corbusier draw with Matias Erasuris in this first meeting. There are some columns that were uh, standing in the, uh, in the plot uh, that has the same kind of relation between the volume and uh, uh, in, and in the built house by Carlos de Landa and the drawings that were proposed by Le Corbusier. There are so many more things that we can explain uh, about that. But the main thing is that there are really, I mean, a, a familiar aspect between the built project and the first ideas that were, uh, I mean, uh, work it as a commission or give it as a, as a commission from Matthias Erasuris to Le Corbusier. 
this is a comparison that, uh, between those houses. Um, the size is uh, uh, really uh, the same one. The difference is that uh, the Carlos de Landa house is a compact house, uh, but the Le Corbusier house it was extended it one in one level and the other one is in two levels. There is the salon, uh, the two volumes, uh, something uh, re or something related. And um, I mean, the reason uh, of this change, as I see, is uh, because the earthquake in Chile, there was a normative that it was uh, discussed at the same time that this project, it was, it must be built in Sabayar. And if we apply uh, this normative of earthquake, um, down you can see the size of the wall if they are made as with, uh, I mean, masonry of stone as uh, uh, the Le Corbusier uh, explained or specified and the technical aspect of the project. This was uh, the project of uh, Le Corbusier has no consistent consistency uh, from the point of view of uh, from the point of view of a structure. So, if we uh, apply the uh, existing normative, this is the kind of structure that it must be built. Uh, it must be used to build in that moment with the house. This is a reinforced. Uh, uh, I mean, masonry structure with a lot of, I mean, uh, element of uh, cement of hormigón. Uh, ¿Cómo se dice hormigón? Well, this is a, I, I mean, a concrete, reinforced concrete, reinforced concrete structure. Thank you, Horacio. Uh, and as you see, this, uh, I mean a really expensive uh, structure and the normative to apply uh, for this, I mean, kind of structure uh, to be, I mean, uh, reasonable uh, in the uh, normative of the moment, it was for a two or three, uh, I mean, uh, levels uh, building. Uh, and for one, yeah, for just one level, it wasn't needed to use this kind of, uh, I mean, a structure that it was mainly more, much more expensive. Those are some uh, propositions and hypotheses about how it could be built the house, considering uh, the possibility to be built it, with the Chilean normative of the moment. Uh, but of course, uh, this was a kind of structure that it was extremely expensive for this, uh, I mean, house. And the uh, uh, reasonable solution, it was the one that was made by Carlos de Landa with two uh, levels uh, not, and not with one that was uh, be proposed by Le Corbusier. Besides another drawings um, of the development of the project. This is a uh, detailing of how uh, everything it could be built. Um, there is a, I mean, main, uh, uh, I mean, aspect to be discussed here. But uh, I will just show this drawing to give us uh, to give them as as example. Finally, uh, my conclusions um, is that uh, the question if the house it was built or not. Or what was the main, I mean, objective that architect had with this house? Uh, this is a house in uh, Kuraizawa in Japan, made by the architect Antonin Raimond in 1932. This house was presented by uh, Le Corbusier in his complete works, um, saying that the Harasiris the Harasiris house it was built, but he didn't receive any credits, and he, uh, I mean. Uh, put uh, that point that uh, the point that the, the 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 idea of the inverted roof slope volume is the main I mean or the the, the principal concept uh, of the proposition. That's I mean it's a strange because I don't know if the in the complete work in the complete complete work 
is there another, uh, I mean, proposition of any other architect? So he has to feel really, I mean, um, impressed and he wanted to make the, the, that kind of, I mean, reclam re re reclamation, I don't know if, if you will say, uh, in his own, I mean, complete words. This is uh, the importance that it was given by uh, uh, by the architects and this in this uh, complete work. Yeah, at seven five uh, uh, are five pages uh, dedicated to the project. But I think the main um, something that it's really I mean important for me is that the house it was included in a exposition made at the Museum of Modern Art in 1935, where were included, um, I mean, projects since 1915 till 1935. And in 1929, uh, it was considered to expose the annex to church house, the lodging house boat, uh, the Bill Savoy, uh, and the Rasoris house, and from 1929, uh, to 31, the Maison de Mandron. The thing is, or the question here is why uh, this house was included uh, at the same time that was included the Ville Savoie, and why it was included if his, I mean, uh, built it version that is Maison de Mandron, it was included too. So uh, this project uh, was put it in the, I mean, in the discussion of architecture by their own architects, it was important for them. And that, I mean, is why it's really important for the modern architecture. Uh, of course, it's here in Chile, uh, we had this kind of idea of project. Uh, there were uh, many initiatives to build uh, this uh, house. Uh, the first one, it was made uh, in 1965, uh, where the idea uh, to build a, that house by Emilio Duarte, it was, I mean, um, first uh, conceptually developed or proposed. And there another, uh, there was another uh, moment around the 80s where uh, it was the idea was to build a house in uh, Concon, in Viña del Mar. And finally, uh, the house it couldn't be built. I mean, today uh, I think it can be possible uh, because there are no. I mean, because we have more uh, really uh, highly technical uh, possibilities to do it. Uh, but it wasn't possible to build as a rational, as a reasonable project uh, in 1930, uh, and always the idea to build it haven't uh, really uh, end well. I had the experience uh, of uh, visiting uh, USA in LA. Uh, there was somebody who wanted to build it, but uh, he invited me to, to, to work with him. But finally, it doesn't work too. So I don't know if it's, I made myself clearly understood, but uh, I hope so. And that's why I, uh, what I uh, wanted to tell you today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claudio. I think it's a wonderful um, presentation. Um, we are free to to have some questions now. Um, I can start with with one uh, uh, comment on on the comparison between. <clears throat> so different projects of uh, the, the same Le Corbusier itself did at, at the same time. I think it's a wonderful your comparison with the Maison de Mandro, uh, which is uh, quite similar. There are a lot of, of, of um, what can I say, um, indications in, in some text, but nobody uh, did the work you do uh, uh, on, on the comparison. I, I have a clear uh, idea of uh, Kenneth Frampton comparing these two houses 
uh, in relation, but not so clear with uh, with the huge salon, with the huge idea, the, hu the idea of the huge space, and the comparison between the roof and the and the ramp at the same level. Uh, one of kind of ideas that um, um, structurate the whole design. I think. Um, thank you so much for that. I think it's pretty clear. Um, so there, there are some questions. No one? Please, if you want, you can you can do it on on the chat also. I can read it. No one. Okay. Okay, we are going ahead. Thank you, Claudio. Thank you very uh, much, everybody. Um, I'm going to present now uh, Flavia Rinaldi. Flavia is architect from the um, government. I think at, at that time was the from the government of the city of uh, Buenos Aires. Uh, when she did uh, this work, we we knew about the work in the in because her presentation at the international meeting on best practice and conservation sustainability and conservation of the modern movement it was really nice and it's really nice to have uh, flavia again here with us uh, to present this work and I, we hope to um, she will be available to present another work we we know she do it uh, uh she did sorry uh, a, a few time ago which is the restoration of of the house of of uh, Amancio William and Delfina Galvez in Mar del Plata but now we have the her presentation on the ateliers for artists uh, in in Buenos Aires uh Flavia thank you for for um be being here and you can start when you want if you want to uh, uh, prove your presentation also uh, go ahead hi everybody good morning i'm i'm really happy to be here sharing this this uh, work once again and it's a, an honor to be here to to present it I will try to share. I think it's okay the presentation, but I want it to be it's bigger. With the, with the full, it is okay. with the full. Okay, that that's, that's it. Be presentation. I will move this so I can go ahead. Okay, I am. I am. I have been listening to the 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 last presentation, Claudio, and it's so near to this other work that Le Corbusier is accompanying today to all of us. Um, I will start showing you how we started. The, the, the work we did with Ateliers um, para Artistas in Buenos Aires uh, started with a plan for the downtown, microcentro plan, and it took um, some axes of the city, some avenues, and then we, we were expanding it to some important parts as Buenos Aires um, um, San Martin, uh, uh, Plaza San Martin. I don't know how to do it. Yes, I can change the plate. Why? Okay. The, the important part of these interventions in the downtown was um, aiming to, to reinforce uh, cultural development and uh, and in that way, heritage conservation was part of the, the principal acts of regeneration of the city. And some other ones, you see there, we have we made a big change when I was working uh, with this in the city um, on Juan Baca's direction. He was the leader of the of the general intervention of downtown. I was accompanying him as a manager. These are one of the beautiful buildings we we got ahead and uh, domes and some facades but once we started looking and searching we decided and had the government approval to take 
uh, enhanced modern architecture it was the first, ta first time that uh, a government went on with modern architecture. We could uh, explain people that it was real heritage, that architecture, uh, modern architecture was part of our history and identity, and we got along. We have here the pink point, this, the, the dot, the pink dot is where this Casa de Estudio para Artistas is now. The red rectangle you are looking at is near the obelisco. So we are really, really um, short, a walking short um, way to the, to the center of the city. And we have here some of the uh, big avenues and the Plaza San Martin is the green part on the other, on the top of the slide. We are really in a very important historical uh, zone of the city. I know. I know. These are some of the great interior sites that the house has, the building has. We are not, we have not been working in the inside. The, our job was to get around on the facade and the dome and the cover. And, but these are really important uh, views so that you can get in touch what, uh, with the biggest building we are touching now. They, it has some interventions in, interventions in the inside. You can see it now. I will tell about these details at the end of the presentation. And we are not now looking at the great plants we have, the Catalan vault that is really um, in, this, in, this, in these drawings. Okay, I will tell you about this once in detail. It is a very nice project, an innovative project of uh, Bonet Veravarros and Lopez Chas. And it has um, it's been dated in 1938, and the, it has some particular situations. The one is that it was self-founded. Uh, there was not an owner except the family. They all uh, got, uh, like we can say, the fundraising now, but it was themselves, and they 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 worked on this design because one of the families of the architects was the owner. Now, the very important situation is that it, it got inside this, this, this lot of the city and revolution, the corner. We didn't, we, they didn't uh, at, got attached to the old architecture in the, in the neighborhood and in, erupted. And they made really an innovation not only because about because the forms and the architecture they generation they generated, but the modern uh, materials they used to get along. They they were really pioneers because they designed um, this corpse on the on the um, city. This corner was dematerialized, and they proposed this um, dialogue between the artists and the city itself, that it was really one of the um, points that we did get as an innovation. It's not a house. It's not a commercial building uh, only. It's something built specially for artist development that was not seen, that was private, uh, private activity, but now it's a public activity that is coming to invite people to see what is happening inside the building. I have to, to attach some with my notes because I get along to many other ways if I don't get it. Uh, the project was uh, developed in seven artist studios who are distributed in two upper floors, combined with double height ceilings. We have internal courtyards on the two upper floors and roof garden and terraces. Now the roof gardens are not in the exact way that Le Corbusier told or, or made it. We have some plants, but we don't have a terrace on earth. That is important because it, it's 
now in Buenos Aires an innovation to have garden terraces. They were on, on absolutely uh, planted on earth, okay, on on not in bases. And uh, this is quite strange because it took us <laughs> ninety years to get along the Le Corbusier, the Corbusier the Corbusier proposal. But on the ground, we have some commercial stores that it took really a big work to convince them to get the to get once again to go back to the original proposal of the architecture. Okay, the this the point with this building is that um, in 1938 people didn't like it, you know. We have a city of academic buildings as shown in the first slides, but now it's appearing this wonderful, I don't know what it is, thing, and it was really rejected. But it was, it has been very well received by architects, by the avant-garde architecture, and of course, artists um, were really enthusiastic about it. They go, they went on um, supporting this building so much that we still have it. We we can see how many other buildings are being demol demolished here or, or not valued enough. But this one got along these 90 years with us and really is a wonderful opportunity to, to go on remarking the importance of this building. We have some drawings. This is an axonometric proposal and a drawing on the facade. And now I will start talking about the really approach of the conservation work we did. This is to remind us that we had our Grupo Austral that is very, very, very related to the Corbusier um, modern movement. The, this team of architects worked with the Corbusier when starting the um, plan for Buenos Aires. So they took and they they learned a lot about it. And well, part of this learning was that they also uh, designed the interiors. And the um, the equipment of the uh, of the own building. This is our our building years ago when I found when we found it in this way. We can see it's nice anyway. Why we will run, now we will see how nice it is when it's going back to its originality. We worked in searches and, and detection of pathologies. You can see here that we have invasive, invasive vegetation that destroyed the metal part of the, of the carpentry. And really, we had some salt, you know, the, in the other, in the down, in the photograph. Um, down on the right, we can see some salt. We have Efflorescencia salinas. I'm sorry, I didn't find how to say it in English, but it's um, okay. I, I think we can understand this. And it's um, really a job that we have in many, many uh, other of cities and buildings. And it's a hard job to take rid of, to get rid of them. On the basement of the building, we have the this beautiful plate, perforated plate, but it was really in a bad situation. And it was also covered with um, uh, another wall. It was, it has been really, really affecting the conception of the building and we could discover it and find it greatly. It was still there. We work on many, um, with many tools to get uh, to know what is happening, what was happening inside the building. We had stratigraphies and some color uh, sliding so that we could get which was the color we would we could have as a main objective to get. You can see in the up in the photograph up on the left that we have the blue 
a beautiful blue that it was checked and defined us to get the, the last painting on the building. And it's a really important that we know that this blue was a discussion, a conversation, because on the, on the documents we had about the building, it was not really this, the, this script described this blue, so we had to check many, many other uh, places to check in many other situations of the building if this blue was just a casualty or, or was really a uh, um, conscious selection for the actor, architects. But it was, so we had this blue. I, I must say that personally, I was a young, young girl living around <laughs> this area, and this blue didn't exist. It was uh, just a Bordeaux. And in my own um, memory, it was impossible that the blue existed. So I had to go down and, uh, and be, to go up to my uh, childhood and get along and revise all my memories and accept that this was blue. And it's very important we, when we are talking about heritage, because no, no, we have some dealing with collective memories. Uh, we, we, we are not able to take some decisions always. We have to take some decisions that also considers the public opinion, and we can document and take down what is happening with that decision. That's why um, I think that the, these experiences helps us uh, help to, to educate, to transmit what we are doing and the decisions and the dots and the conversations we have to have with other people and with ourselves are helping us to be better architects when acting on heritage. This, really, this is the most wonderful part. So we, we have some many... Uh, photographs on it. It's technical, I know, but it's, it's technique. Technique is what can talk us really and absolutely um, with the truth when we are working on these buildings. These are the, um, the views we had. We're going again to search and to mark uh, and, and put down which is what is happening with the glass with the metal, with the air conditioning disposal they have on facade that is really a very hard condition to get rid of because we have to give air conditioning to the buildings, to the commercial uh, places and to the, the, um, the ateliers itself. But we have to take in consideration how to manage it so that they don't uh, interfere in the lecture of the facade. This is all. Oh, this plan is um, it's not neat. I am so sorry. I, um, we can imagine it, and I will give Horacio these documents to can so we, I, I can be, make it better so you can have these plans in a better view. And this is how we got with the blue and the undulating way on the public space, so that when you are walking there, you get you are surprised by this undulation um, building on the building. And you are, the important part is have you noticed that the public space is getting inside the building, or perhaps the building is getting out to the public space, inviting you to get a new conversation with the building itself. This is uh, another of the proposals where lighting was um, really difficult because we didn't want to make it a dramatical opportunity, but on, only um, uh, marking a presence of the building. We know that in Heritage, we don't have to go with lightings on the building, but sometimes it's, up, it's absolutely necessary because when we are doing indirect lighting, it's not enough, or we cannot always give the accents to the building itself where it's important to give it. Um, we got that license to use the lighting on the building too. And we are now seeing some of the important 
parts and innovating parts of the building. This, um, we had some different type of glass, the round, the circular ones that were thick and not and translucent and not transparent. We had uh, glad, glass as anyone, <laughs> transparent with quadro, four millimeters float. But when we are talking about some of the um, translucent glasses, it's really interesting now. Interesting to know that they put two uh, plates of glass and a cloth inside. That was a really, really difficult um, job to replace because we we had to take uh, to get along searching some cloth that was enough uh, transparent, but it's not translucent. <laughs> Okay, it took some time. The, the contract, um, the company that worked for this uh, intervention really was very engaged. Also, the people working for, for the government in this opportunity, uh, Silvia Sanchez, the, the, the company was Kayen, and Silvia Sanchez was the director, the inspector uh, for the government. And we had many other people of restoration assessments that um, got along searching everywhere and making many proofs. So we could finally got this one and the cloth was really trapped into the plates. And it's and now we are seeing that it worked perfectly. At least this year, it was in 2017, we made this job and six years and nothing happened. That was really the, um, a preoccupation for us that the cloth got along without transformation, humidity, or getting old and, and yellowing. And it got, it's really in a good uh, condition. And now we have this, this um, in the corner, we had these plates that were metal plates. And one of the innovations for us was it was full, filled with cork. And obviously, we didn't replace it. We had it consolidated with some technical uh, proposals of the company and really are in a great, great situation now once again. The, uh, I will go on and tell you then what is happening with this nowadays. This is the final stage of the, of the intervention in before and after. We love showing this because we can take a look of what really happened. We could take this opportunity and go back to the original proposal without um, too much effort. This is the commercial plate once again, the plan. And fortunately, um, the intervention in the downside is going along someday and someday and a year we have some other proposal and you get increasing improvements and this year we had the great the new that this the paraguay street it, it's paraguay and suipacha on paraguay that was this intervention in including some idea that is buenos aires trying to get along that is having some more green having some more green on the on the city, and these are, this is one of the interve interventions we did, they did, I'm not now in the government of Buenos Aires, I am part of it in, the, in my heart because of the interventions, but I'm not there now. And this is another really important point is that the, with the, the um, impulse, I can say, yeah, with the impulse of the, um, of, the facade intervention and the seat intervention, um, some private uh, companies are getting here and working to improve this situation. Bisman Ediciones install, uh, had installed here uh, in one of the, of the ateliers and really are in getting um, a promotion of the building, a really, a really, really important of architecture development. And they are in, inviting young architects to show their work and really 
got along and is in is helping us as architects architects working on heritage to invite more people to do our work to love heritage to recognize the very un unique part of the um, architecture when we are talking about identity and we are very happy to see that modern architecture is now working really really good with the recognition and in the interests of the people itself and not only with uh, about architecture uh, talking and that's it i am i have many other things to say if you want to know but i know i am always in a hurry because i i am anxious you know i'm so sorry <laughs> Um, I will mm -hmm. go back so that you can see some wonderful images of the of this building and stop sharing when you tell me, Horacio. Oh, thank you so much, Flavia, for this uh, very impressive presentation. I think you you showed mm -hmm. uh, this technical af aspect of the of the. Uh, decision of the restoration process. I think it's uh, really nice how you you tell us about the blue and the and the the decision you you took on 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 choosing one or or, or other uh, um, technical issues in in this case. I think the the case is really impressive. Of course, uh, it's. Uh, quite um, uh, early, uh, this kind of architecture. And it seems to be one of the of the main, uh, what can I say, the, the main uh, cases, uh, one of the uh, masterpieces of the mm -hmm. of the city. Uh, I think it's it's so nice uh, how you tell us the the restoration process also. And of course, um the the building is really impressive now because it is it is uh, restored um i hope uh, someone has uh, another another question or comment um please uh, from from the other uh, persons oh vicente go ahead please uh, hi um uh, first, uh, thank you, Flavia, for the presentation, and thank you, uh, Claudio, but he he had to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, you mentioned something about, uh, I, I didn't catch someone in the presentation, uh, how is the state of the building now and some uses uh, it has, but uh, is there an institution that is uh, making an effort to uh, maintain the state of the building actively or you yourself with the restoration in this case? And on that same thing, uh, is there some um, some maintenance labor uh, uh, in the building, uh, like uh, in some routine? <laughs> okay, let's start. The state is the last one I, I showed you, the, um, the blue one, <laughs> the, the last slide. It's really um, in this way. We had some details on the plate down, down the perforated plate because we had oxidation. I am not in charge of the maintenance. It is a, a building with some properties and it works as any other building. And they have uh, we have a, a consortium, uh, and they get along with the maintenance themselves. We I have the opportunity to to talk to them frequently and ask them to to get along some some jobs that is very important they get now. Uh, and we when the um, when my job ended and uh, the team job ended, the, we gave the people a manual so that uh, they knew the frequency they had to consider any of the jobs of maintenance. That's always given when we are working from a public office. Uh, and I think that it's very important that we do it with, whenever we are working in a building, and not only when we work on heritage, but when we work on on any other situation when we build 
we have to to teach anyone who has to how it has to be maintained. And nowadays, we don't have a new plan to go on uh, working with the uh, conservation of this building. But there are some ways in Buenos Aires and in Argentina that that can fund that give money to the consortium to get along if they consider it necessary. Uh, generally, they consider it necessary, but not always. Uh, the government goes and 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 funds the 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 the, the promotions or the uh, the proposals the particular or private people ask for, and. Um, this is anyway very important that you consider you we all consider that is the this is the first modern architecture building that was really done and paid by a government by public modern government by money that comes directly from the the population it was really important and i think that it, it made the um, a turning point, and it taught us how to go on, not only uh, go into academic heritage, but considering this a really important opportunity to get some other buildings, just as Horacio told you uh, at the beginning of my presentation, that we, are, we have uh, added another really important architecture, uh, modern architecture piece, and is it was uh, done with all the country's money. Um, really, uh, this this is very important for me because we don't have we don't always have the opportunity to get money on modern architecture coming from public funds. Yeah, um, I I think that when I went to Chile years ago and showed it, it was a very very. Um, uh, most important, important comment I got about the public funding of this kind of architecture. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I, I um, answered everything you asked, Vicente. I'm sorry. I, I took down something, some points, and I don't know. Maybe if you talked uh, about the use the, uh, of the building, just uh, shows oh. positions. Uh, are there other uses I see a store there? No, I don't know if there is there a store uh, functioning in the building. Yeah. <laughs> it's it 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 it's it has the same uses. You have ateliers upstairs, and you have commercial uh, functions downstairs, and um, really on the public space, uh, sharing space. Um, and the, what I wanted to to uh, destacar. Mm, distinguish or, or yeah. how is it well, make a point yeah. yes yes to show okay. us to the, show yes, is uh, that uh, that the public intervention and yeah. that once this this building was blue again or shining again in the middle of in the middle of the city many private people private money came back to it and this is that is why I told you about Bisman editions that really uh, is summing up. Yeah, it's going, it's, it's summing up. No, it's improving, it's um, adding value to the intervention. Okay. You, you, that is what I wanted to say. But it's everything going okay. And, and some, it's important also to tell you that if you have to change the use of a building that is uh, in the catalog of the city, or in the catalog of the nation in Argentina, we have to ask about the possibility of changing the use. Fortunately, it's okay here, and we didn't have to make uh, an, a, a question about that. Anyway, we we have to always go along with the Comisión Nacional de Monumentos, Monuments Commission, and uh, the historical protection area we have as organisms that are always watching what is happening with the heritage, they, they have to to consider to keep in a good condition. It's, there are many laws about it here, yeah, fortunately. <laughs> okay, some other questions or comments? 
Thank you, Xavier. Okay, thank you. I must say thank you to Carolina Quiroga. She was uh, one of our mm. pre-event speakers uh, in, the, in the last uh, uh, um, time, in the last presentation. And Maria Fernanda Hawa, he's already been with us in, in another one. Thank you so much. Uh, may I ask a, a, um, a, a question? It's it's the same uh, uh, store there? Is the same that it was there? The the clothes no. uh, selling store? No, it's not the same. No. I, I the, remember it was there, a, a hat. Uh, yes. Stores, <laughs> and it was yeah. really nice because it, it's quite old and, and yeah. quite impressive. I... I I must comment that Bisman Editions is is doing a very good job uh, uh, related with young generations of architects. Yeah. A lot of young generations of architects from Argentina and ex uh, are uh, exposing their 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 job, uh, their works, uh, their, their uh, plans and maquettes, and staying there also uh, for a for a, a few time. Uh, at the residence, I know. Uh, there are, I think it's it's really nice because they are also showing the place, you know? And if, yes. if you can you yes. can call there and yes. and have a, a, a guided tour. Uh, yes. it's nice. It. We we went with the students so many times uh to Buenos Aires and, and one this one of the of the main uh buildings on the tour so um thank you so much i must uh uh read a message from claudio claudio uh um it's it's very sorry uh with you because he he must go uh because of of uh, some um uh some uh work he must do at the master uh program uh so he's very sorry uh, Maria Fernanda said, uh, hello, Horacio and everyone. Congratulations. Uh, um, congratulations for these events. Great presentation, Claudia Flavia. Thank you, Maria Fernanda. Uh, she's from Venezuela. Uh, she's, uh, I think, uh, are you living in, in Barcelona? Uh, really, Maria Fernanda, yes, I know. And hi, Carolina, how are you? Hello, excellent presentation. <laughs> excellent both. And really connected. <laughs> and I thank Carolina Quiroga who invited me to present Atelier to Docomomo. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I know you ha you are having, or you already had, uh, you are having a, 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 another presentation for, the, for, for an event in, I think it's in the, in the School of Architecture this week, or yeah, um, um, we are going yeah. with Mariana Quiroga to, to Rosario. To Rosario. Ah, to Rosario. Yes, yes, yeah. to Rosario. Yes, yes, the most beautiful city in Argentina. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. And okay. last week we have been in Cordoba. Fortunately, Mariana is, is my boss now. Mariana, I'm working now in the national government, and. We are all together, you see. <laughs> we, the, the good people is getting together always. And we are going on heritage to to make a, a better world for us with, with history uh, on our backs. Um, we are working a lot on showing our work. It's really important that, that we promote and we tell. You all know, or perhaps you don't, don't not all people here, but I, I am uh always promoting education and with these uh opportunities and and presentations uh i think that we can show that we can learn something about everyone and and get it for ourselves to to repeat it and and uh, join these good practices um, right. Just for investigation, uh, when we cannot do or when we cannot build something, but we can investigate with a uh, proposal of educate. Yeah. Okay. So thank you so much. Uh, we are 
just finishing our uh i think we have only two pre-events uh, uh ahead or three three pre-events ahead yeah. uh, uh we are quite closing this this uh pre-events uh um um program and probably we're starting a new one next year on the on the beginning of march probably uh so thank you so much flavia thank you carolina thank for you. being here um all the thrills uh, remind us that all prevents are recorded on the channel centro de patrimonio uc follow us in the Comoma conference 2000 uh 24 and Centro Patrimonio. Thank you so much. See you uh, next Tuesday. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Have a good day. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.